This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp and Mint Mobile. Stitch, Disney's extraordinary experiment 626. Rocket, Marvel's murderous mercenary mustelid. Those are like weasels and ferrets and raccoons. You know, because he's a... Uh, just because you're cute and fluffy doesn't mean you aren't the deadliest thing in the universe. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the distant reaches of outer space, the mad scientist Jumba Jukiba was accused of illegal genetic experimentation. He took the galaxy's most fearsome, most dangerous, most absolutely purely black-hearted evil creatures and smushed them all together. A great man with a vision, persecuted by spineless know-nothing bureaucrats. The result? Experiment 626, though you can just call him Stitch. <gasps> he did not! I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so <coughs> naughty. <laughs> After being slated for termination, Stitch escapes to a distant planet, Eard. Oh, wait, Earth. Crash landing in the Hawaiian island of Kauai, of all places. There, he'd be adopted by the Earth girl Lilo and went incognito as the ugliest dog ever. And despite his horrific upbringing, Stitch found he had a softer side, a love of Elvis, and a kinship with Lilo, a devil child who didn't fit in, just like him. It wasn't long before Stitch was ready to do anything to protect his new Ohana from the alien threats coming to get him. And let me tell you, as a fellow mad scientist, Jumbo really outdid himself here. I've been meaning to dig deeper into Stitch's piecemeal alien biology for years. First of all, his fluffy exterior is entirely bulletproof, fireproof, and nearly impenetrable. Oh, this comes with a catch. His molecular structure is so dense, he can't swim. Sucks he landed in Hawaii of all places. Stitch can crawl on walls, hear a whisper from miles away, and scream so loud he'll blow you to kingdom come. He's strong enough to lift 3,000 times his own body weight and can spin dash so fast he'll burst into flames. His eyesight is also incredible. He's got night, x-ray, and infrared vision and can even zoom in hundreds of times over. Even better, he can hop loogies like a friggin' machine gun. His spit is conductive enough to short circuit electronics, stick objects together like glue, and even dissolve solid rock. Oh, and he's somehow a genius too. The dude knows molecular physics and can build entire mech suits and spaceships out of junk in seconds. You wouldn't think it from his everything, but Stitch is a genius with a brain comparable to a supercomputer. The world's most powerful supercomputer right now is Hewlett Packard's Frontier, which can make one quintillion calculations a second. Comparing Stitch to Frontier is frankly a massive lowball. See, Stitch was programmed to have Jumba's own intelligence, and Jumba's IQ has been compared to that of an entire galaxy combined. I have conducted my own genetic analysis to determine Stitch's alien progenitors. His DNA includes traces of the Manglioid of Meridian 4, the Goo Goblin Booger Beast, the People Eating Pus Monkey, the Deadly Disemboweler, the Boiling Tongueoid, and the Bottom Feeding Scum Sucker. It sounds like your ex-wife, <laughs> am I right? No, Wiz, what the hell? That's such a messed up thing to say about her. Be better. I'm so disappointed in you. You can make those jokes when you start paying the alimony. Uh, well, Stitch's incredible buffet of alien DNA is supported by a power cell embedded in his body, fueled by the energy of two colliding planets. Huh? Colliding planets! Uh, uh are, are, are you coming back? No? F*** you! Okay. He's got a jetpack, freeze ray, grenades, and a Seismotronic 200, which can make sandwiches gigantic! Oh, and shrink enemies, that's, that's cool too. Stitch was a one-fluff army, and he proved it when everyone from the Galactic Federation to the dastardly Dr. Hamsterveel came to pick a fight with him. Including all of Jumba's experiments. Yeah, 626 isn't just some random number. There are hundreds of these little bastards running around. More troublemaking cousins to add to his growing Ohana. Though he had to pacify many of them first, like Slushy, who can create a snowstorm that covered all of Kauai. Or Richter, who can split the Earth in half and shoot shatter planet-busting asteroids. And Jumba stated that Stitch was the most destructive, unstoppable monster the universe has ever seen. Even more dangerous than Holio, 
who can create a black hole large enough to consume the entire universe. Speaking of black holes, in the anime, yes, there's a Lilo and Stitch anime. Stitch once piloted a ship carrying a supernova bomb, strong enough to wipe out a galaxy, and flew it into a black hole. It and the black hole both exploded on top of him, and he popped out no worse for the wear. You know, like, like you do. Another time, he piloted a ship to a different black hole in less than two minutes. It's unclear exactly how far this was, but the average distance between stars is about five light years. That means his ship would have had to have been flying at over one million times the speed of light. And when he's filled with love for his Ohana, the power cell inside Stitch surges incalculably. He used this to defeat Dark End, an experiment explicitly made to be stronger than Stitch, who had just defeated four Stitch clones on his own. And Stitch completely annihilated him. He knocked Dark End into outer space so hard he dislodged a city-sized space station. You know, like you do. He's even managed to worm his way into completely different Disney properties. Oh god, we don't have another Deadpool on our hands, do we? With Stitch around, Lilo, Nani, and the inhabitants of Earth couldn't be safer. Surf's up for everyone's favorite blue fuzzball of death. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to spend all your time on your work, your friends, your family, but how much time do you actually spend on yourself? Therapy can be an incredible asset to your mental health, even if you don't think you need it right at this moment. A lot of these problems can be hard to spot without self-reflection and an outside perspective. It's easy to accept things the way they are without realizing that maybe they could be better. Everyone can benefit from becoming the best version of themselves. Positive coping skills, setting boundaries, supporting others without leaving yourself behind, all incredibly important to practice in your journey for self-fulfillment. And in this super busy world, BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be flexible to your schedule. All you have to do to start is fill out a brief questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist. And if you'd like to make a change, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DeathBattle. Somewhere in the Black Mountain Hills of Dakota, there was a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon. Rocket, not Rocky. That's the Beatles song he's named after. Well... I have wasted a lot of time on some very specific research. In fact, it's just Rocket. Despite his startling resemblance to the resourceful dumpster diving mammal, Rocket originates from the alien planet Halfworld, which served as an asylum for the criminally insane ruled over by alien humanoids. Along with many of Halfworld's cutesy inhabitants, Rocket was subjected to cybergenetic modifications by his overlords. All with the purpose of being Halfworld's warden. Ranger Rocket. Rocket's mutations make him smarter, stronger, faster, and tougher than your average garbage goblin. His cybernetic skeleton is connected to artificial vertebrae and neural implants, allowing him to dodge gunfire and laser beams, survive an explosion the size of a city block, and keep up with supervillains like Kraven and Venom. Alongside pals Lila the Otter and Walrus the... Yeah. Rocket battled the mercenary Blackjack O'Hare and Killer Clowns and saved the day time and time again. I bet you're wondering what the hell this has to do with Guardians of the Galaxy. In a convoluted editorial effort to reboot his character, Rocket left Halfworld to become a mercenary and had his memories suppressed. After a betrayal by his otter lover, a different one, he has a thing for otters, Rocket was sent to jail. Space jail. And prison changes a man. Gun was the Saturday morning cartoon character of yore. He was a felon, cynical and hardened by the criminal justice system. The space criminal justice system. Rocket suffered not only from his penal servitude, but the trauma of his brutal genetic modifications and a lingering sense of alienation. It was in this personal hell where he'd meet a bunch of a-holes who would soon be his new teammates. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, and of course, his best pal Groot. And together they were the Guardians of the Galaxy, defending the free peoples of the cosmos from all manner of alien menace. For a price, of course. Though unlike some of the powerhouses on his team, Rocket's raccoon body is- I told you he's not a raccoon. He was created on Halfworld and is the last of an entire race of raccoon-like aliens. He just happens to look like an Earth raccoon. Don't lecture me on raccoons, Wiz. I'm an expert. Been fighting the bastards for years. Did you know their tiny little bandit masks are for reducing glare to enhance night vision? They can hear noises as quiet as earthworms digging underground. And about two-thirds of the sensory perception part of their cerebral cortex is to 
promote it to their tactile impulses. That's where they grab shit with their tiny little hands. All perfectly suited to a nimble, stealthy glass cannon like Rocket. Yeah, cause he's a raccoon. As I was saying, Rocket became the team's resident grease monkey, specializing in all things technology and engineering. And fittingly, his specialty in combat is firearms. Yep, that sounds like my cue, Wiz. Rocket's built giant mechs, cobbled together random junk for an improvised flamethrower, and casually slapped together a bomb strong enough to destroy a moon. Oh, and he's got every kind of hand cannon imaginable. Pistols, machine guns, miniguns, rifles, rocket launchers, plasma guns, laser guns, and my favorite, the melon popper, where melon means head and pop means... Kabam. That melon belonged to a Super Scroll, one of the deadliest warriors in the Marvel Universe. With the combined abilities of the Fantastic Four, including the Thing, who survived a blast from the power cosmic that could split a planet in two. Yeah, Rocket's weapons are crazy, like the Rampart Armed Phasic Cannon, which utilizes cold fusion and could melt the face off the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. The same Thanos who is strong enough to survive a supermassive black hole four light years across, and came out with only light scratches. The the very same purple Shrek who's battled Universe Busters and beyond, like Thor, Hulk, and Odin. If Thanos can walk through attacks from a dude who can shake the multiverse and Rocket's guns can hurt him, I'm gonna need one of those puppies under my pillow ASAP. And similar weaponry to what Rocket's used can operate down to the picosecond, which is one trillionth of a second. He can access all of these goodies at any time from his orbital stash, a remote-controlled satellite that'll deliver anything he wants lickety-split. Rocket can zoom through the sky on his rocket skates, project force fields, teleport with a portable AI, melt through solid metal with acid, and even hack foreign technology. Anything from a prison to a planet to an entire galactic empire, Rocket's the most dangerous not raccoon who's totally a raccoon in the whole universe. And he's proven it with the Guardians. He saved Earth at least 11 times, cured Ego the living planet of a lice infestation, and held his own against an entire world trying to kill him all at once. He even devised a plan that ultimately stopped Dormammu the Lord of the Friggin' Dark Dimension! No wonder Star-Lord called Rocket the greatest tactical mind he's ever met, even if sometimes he has a tendency to run in guns blazing. Though he'd always be a wise-cracking son of a bitch, his time with the Guardians softened his edges. He learned to enjoy life again, and even made it back to Half-World to send that bastard Blackjack O'Hare packing. And even though he clearly is one, whatever you do, don't call him a raccoon, cause there's nowhere in the galaxy to hide from this gun-toting mother Flarker. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Mint Mobile. It's no surprise, inflation is everywhere. There's no escaping it. And if you're looking for a break, look no further than Mint Mobile. It's the first company to sell a premium wireless service online only. You can save a ton and order from home with plans starting at just $15 a month. That kind of low price is exactly what we all need in a time when everything is just getting more and more expensive. It isn't sorcery. By going online only and getting rid of the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile can pass those savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Better yet, you can keep your current phone number and contact, so switching over is no big deal. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash deathbattle. That's mintmobile.com slash death battle. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! My ship, Fork Face! What did you say about my mother? Disgust me.
That's it. Gonna need a bigger gun. Come to Papa. I guess you could call this my Thanos Buster. It's hunting season now, Buzzball. Guy wasn't necessary, Wiz, but I felt it was an artful touch. Though similar in many ways, Stitch and Rocket's fighting styles were polar opposites. Stitch was more than strong enough to tear Rocket apart physically, while Rocket's guns were powerful enough to kill people even stronger than Stitch. So the question was simple. If both of them only needed one hit to win, who would get the killing blow first? It all came down to speed. Rocket has dodged lasers, and his guns could operate down to the picosecond, one trillionth of a second. But Stitch's supercomputer brain could operate down to the quintillionth of a second, a million times faster, at minimum. And his ability to pilot that ship at over a million times the speed of light meant that he more than had the reaction speed to dodge anything Rocket threw at him. Rocket's tactical brilliance meant he could keep Stitch at bay with tricks for a while, but he couldn't reliably seal the deal. Despite being a little blue goblin, Stitch usually stays level-headed in a fight, whereas this rocket can be way more impulsive. And frankly, Stitch is probably even smarter considering he has the combined IQ of an entire galaxy. One slip up from Rocket is all Stitch would need to end the fight. Rocket's arsenal was absolutely bonkers to be sure, but Stitch's superior speed, physical strength, and unbelievable intelligence gave him the win. Looks like this rocket's blasting off again! The winner is... <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> The winner is Stitch. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We have a new death battle releasing every two weeks this year. And click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Planet level members even see death battles before anyone else, so don't miss out.